Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick uh, dropping in on you. Look, uh, normally I would be in the office already, but uh, had a morning meeting with baby about some things we had going on. So uh, I am on the way to the office now and I decided this would be a good time to do a video I was actually planning on doing yesterday and got sidetracked uh, with some stuff that was going on. Uh, we have our 19 year old doing some stuff that we are very proud of and we're trying to back her up on it so we're a little bit busier than usual. But hey, um, here's what it is. Look, I'm not going to be long on this. Uh, but it's something that needs to be said. Um, I haven't had a whole lot to say about this guy, but I have in the past let it be known uh, that I think that we have allowed him to overstep his bounds and we have put him in a mix and he has done nothing but hurt the community. And it is something that we need to get a grip on, not just with this dude, uh, but with non-blacks and in many cases non-foundational blacks and here's who I'm talking about DJ Vlad DJ Vlad has been given like, too much access too much leverage too much force, too much power in things that he has nothing to do with uh, that comes from what we've created, uh, hip hop, uh, our black presence, our black celebrity. And, you know, he has built an entire platform that you literally got blacks looking to get on. And then he comes at you disrespectfully. More importantly, he will research and do stuff and put you put people in binds that has, in many cases, got cats arrested and convicted. Now, first of all, you don't need to be doing anything you should get, you could get arrested and convicted for in most of these cases, um, you know, but at the same time, he doesn't mean the black community any good. He's out, he's getting paid off of who we are, and he's not the only one. Uh, it's far too many getting paid. It's far too many invited in. Uh, even though I hate the euphemism or metaphor, uh, invited to the uh, to the picnic. Uh, my whole thing is we we've invited too many to the picnic. We are not only inviting them; we are giving them space at the main table. The main table where nobody should be sitting except the heavy hitters within our own tribe, our own village. And he come here. And so why am I bringing him up now? Is because he has gone public and made a statement that uh, he's denouncing and speaking on the fact that Rihanna and ASAP Rocky uh, are having a baby out of wedlock. Well, first and foremost, let me do my disclaimer. Anybody who's followed me know how big I am on family. And so I'm big on marriage. And to me, family, marriage has to be a part of family because we live in a world where that needs to be a decisive commitment and covenant and, covenant and understanding of what's going on. I think that we need to stop having girlfriends and boyfriends and start having husbands and wives. I think that we need to understand the responsibility and the distinguishment on a subconscious level of uh, that distinguishes the two. Uh, you can be with someone five years as a boyfriend and it's still not the same thing as being a husband. Same thing with a girlfriend and a wife. There's a level of commitment psychologically and subconsciously that comes with saying I'm your husband versus I'm your boyfriend. Uh, and we understand that. That's why you can have a person that's been boyfriend and girlfriend for five years and they end up getting married and they're, they're broken up within a couple of years. They said, we should have never known. You had never had to step into the true commitment of being. You never had the pressure of being told, all right, we got to go the whole distance. So this whole new world concept of just riding until you, you get tired of it and throw it away 
means that now you're starting stuff and not finishing. You're creating babies in situations where both parents are not going to be there in the long term. Uh, as far as proximity wise, one's going to be gone. So I definitely have um, a very strong uh, train or thought or philosophy towards marriage. I believe that it is the literal foundation of the strength and the empowerment and the growth of the black community. It is the it is the first institution on which the family institution is built. And the family institution is the institution through which we uh, teach and inculcate our values, interests, and principles into our children so that they are perpetuated out through generations. If you don't have a value system, I mean, if you don't have a family home system in which these values can be perpetuated, taught, modeled by uh, both male and female, masculine and feminine energy, then you have a problem. Okay, so yes, I believe in marriage. Uh, I believe in, I also, now with ASAP and Rihanna, we're talking about Rihanna's uh, at billionaire status and ASAP is not poor. So we're talking about two rich people who will be able to give the kid financially anything that they need. Now, emotionally, psychologically, and all this other stuff that comes along with creating a home and stability, you know, that's yet to be seen. And I don't know what type of parents they're gonna be because I can't speak on that. Now, uh, the reason I was hesitant to jump on it is because Rihanna is n a non-foundational uh, black operating in America, but from Barbados. And it's, it's relevant, especially with her, because of the crap she pulled on Martin Luther King Day. I'm not a big person on holidays and all that stuff like that, but I am big on respecting elders and respecting people who have gave, given the ultimate sacrifice and gone the distance and put in the work. Um, you know, uh, whether they were assassinated or whether they just died, you know, after putting in so many long hours in the struggle. Uh, you know, like, uh, I still don't mess with Mark Lamont Hill after the way he went after Dr. Francis Cress Welsing immediately after her death. That's a level of respect you have with Dr. King, you know, putting an earring in his ear and, and a grill. You know, I mean, it may have had some comedic uh, intent, but that's a level of respect. And my thing is, would Dr. King have a thought, you know, hey, uh, that's cool or that's what's up or whatever you want to call it. And he was a cool dude. If you really research in him and you catch him out the suit, he was a pretty cool dude. But at the same time, uh, I don't think that was a good representation. And so I see it as, as being disrespectful. So this isn't so much about defending Rihanna as it is catching somebody who's outside of blackness, period. And the reason why, even though Rihanna is a non-foundational black, that you got to be careful about how you let people handle her, is because blacks that who are foundational blacks identify with her. And so psychologically, there's a connection, whether you can see it or not. And not everybody's thinking on the level of, you know, uh, descendants of slaves, foundational blacks, black first. You know, there are some people who still see black and, 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 and that's it. And they are a part of the fold, even though they may not be completely aware of what's going on and how things work. They still are a part of the fold and they have some ways to go. So they identify with her. So you got to be careful how you let people handle people that you are emotionally and psychologically connected to. So this dude comes in and makes this statement. First of all, who in the hell are you to sit up and tell someone what they can and cannot do? After, with all the dirt and crap this dude is doing. Uh, and it doesn't matter to me the reason behind it or his, his, his thought thinking behind it. What it is is you're out of line. And we have been far too tolerant of non-blacks coming in and speaking on black issues and speaking. Now, you know, if that had been somebody else, you know, you know, whether I like them or not, but somebody who's actually a part of the black community, somebody who's actually out doing things to help the black community, and they come out and they say, it's not a good look, then, you know, that's one thing. But for somebody who is not black 
and who has a track record of screwing over blacks who come on their show, being disrespectful, putting them out there, you know, putting them in uh, the crosshairs of the government and so much else. To me, he's an agent. To me, he's literally there to create problems within the black community and under the guise of journalism. He's not a journalist. So we need to stop supporting that crap. We need to start sending messages to the people we love and care about who may be gravitating toward him. Hey, I ain't with that, don't do that. I mean, we've got to start literally leveraging and then we gotta start calling this BS what it is. I mean, and, and so a lot of people, because this is how we've been conditioned, is gonna say, well, it was true. My thing is, that was a thing that when I grew up that I don't see now and it's reflected in how we're doing socially as a race. We could fight in my family. Like me and my brothers and cousins could be in a fight with each other. And it's happened. I mean, literally we're in a fight with each other. I mean, we in a fight with each other and somebody come up and say something to one of, one of the ones that I'm fighting with. And all of a sudden, it's not me and my cousin fighting anymore, me and my brother. Now we all on this dude and, and handling him because he stepped off into family business. That's the way we were trained. I don't care where we at, what's going on with us, somebody come in the mix, get them. And so that's the same reason why I don't buy the argument that, okay, we we checking cops and all this other stuff about killing, but we no, we checking everybody about killing uh, one another in the hood and killing each other in the hood, but that don't mean we because we've got an issue in in in, in the in the community that somebody else can come in and kill them and say, well, y'all killing each other. No, it doesn't work that way. We need to fix that, but you're not gonna come in and exacerbate the matter, and that's what Vlad is doing. So we have to be aware of how this stuff works. He has no place in our community. He doesn't belong. He needs to go find something else to do. He needs to go make a living off of something else or someone else. We need to start cherishing what we have. We need to start getting behind black people who are going to do fair interviews, who are going to be aware of the vulnerability of the people they're interviewing and, and, and care enough about them not to put them out there. We need to have that. We need to be supporting that. We need to build that. We need to keep these clowns out of our mix. And on that note, look, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. Um, I've got about another 10 minutes before I get to the office, but I'm gonna get my head right. Um, not used to arriving at the office in the daylight, so this is a little weird. But anyway, I'm out.